During the Vietnam War, the Grumman A6 intruder served as the main battery of carrier aviation, and it was still in use by the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps USMC, in 1996. The A6 was still the most effective USMC strike aircraft during Operation Desert Storm ODS, in 1991, because it was a true all-weather, day-night precision bomber. Captain Tom Uriga joined the VMA AW224 Bengals in the early spring of 1990. He was an Eastern Washington University graduate. Uriga participated in the early ODS strikes as one of the USMC A6 pilots. In the first part of the Gulf War, we started out with deep strikes on Basra, Shaiba, and Talil. We'd use a mix of ordnance, since the weather was shitty. 2,000-pound LGBs and 2,000-pound steel nose cone. We'd try to pickle the LGBs right in the middle of the basket. On the first night of the war, we came back with better BDA bomb damage assessment than the F-117s had. My first mission was with a guy named Rob McCarthy, an RAF exchange officer, and tornado navigator. He had absolutely no fear of death. He had flown in the airshow demo team for the tornado, where they do the 100 feet inverted near supersonic pass. Nothing scared Rob. First night we flew, we're heading into Iraq, and we're heading into Shaiba Airfield. This was the first time we had actually flown with the navigation and formation lights out, and relied on the green formation lights instead. The lights on every jet were different. Some lights had burned out, which meant you couldn't tell what was what. You thought you were rendezvousing on Battlestar Galactica because of all the different lights. Off to the left side, as we're crossing the Gulf, you could see the SAM launches and AAA in Kuwait City. Huge, holy shit, look at this stuff. Rob's got his head in the boot, doing updates. We're getting up there over the salt marshes, and little stuff, red tracers, was arcing below us with bigger stuff, white tracers, reaching up higher to about 20,000 feet. Then you had some big AAA, big white bursts up at our altitude, but it was less frequent. I think the red stuff was ZSUs. It was disturbing enough, but you knew they weren't all radar guided because you didn't have a lot of radar warning about everything. About this time, Rob pulled his head out and said in typical British fashion, I say, Tom, it appears those blokes are shooting at us. No shit, Rob, put your head back in the boot. After weeks of deep strikes and related operations, according to Rick Morgan's description in his book, A6 Intruder Units 1974-1996, on February 20th, Marine units switched to Battlefield Air Interdiction, EBAI, as their primary function in order to prepare for the ground assault. The employment of kill boxes, which were latitude and longitude grids where FACs, familiar with their assigned zone, would call an aircraft to target Iraqi army units as they were located, was crucial to the success of this mission. As the enemy forces realized they had little chance of escaping the Allied Air Force, the process proved lethally effective and contributed to their eventual mass capitulation. During the last several days of Desert Storm, Captain Yoriga piloted a number of BAI sorties. The Air Force called the killbox missions CAS. What we Marines called CAS, the Air Force called crazy. The B-52s heavily involved in killbox operations flew 10-hour missions from Diego Garcia. None had the external racks they used in Vietnam. They carried only 56 500-pound bombs. Two A6s did more damage than a B-52. They just salvoed the entire load in one pass. Their BDA pictures showed mile-long strips of closely spaced craters, usually laterally displaced from their targets, largely due to 100-knot high-altitude winds. Carpet bombing made a lot of noise but didn't hit much. The typical Hornet load was four or six MK-82s or rock eyes. Without tankers, they had about 10 minutes of time on station in Kuwait. They made one pass, dropped two bombs, and then went feet wet to a tanker, gassed up, came in, and dropped the rest, before going home and getting credit for two combat missions on one flight. Pretty cheesy way to earn air medals. No Marine A6 ever saw a tanker, yet we had more than 40 minutes TOS, even in northern Kuwait. The intruder's outstanding endurance made it a firm favorite amongst the Marines fighting the war on the ground. One FAC attached to the infantry was an EA-6B NFO, who stated post-war. Our first three choices for CAS aircraft were Number one, the intruder Number two, the intruder And number three, the intruder. It had plenty of bombs and enough gas to stick around. 
the Hornets had less of each. And as for the Harriers, if we didn't have a target ready for them when they checked in, they almost always went right back to the tanker.